up everyone, welcome to Drummer's Perspective. My name is Ben Todd and I'm here to help broaden your scope of what's possible as a drummer. Thanks so much for tuning in today, whether you're listening on the podcast or you're here on YouTube, I really, really appreciate you. If you are on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, that would really help me out. Today though, I had the incredible pleasure of chatting with one of my absolute favorite Australian drummers and that's Mr. Danny Ferrugia. Now for anyone that doesn't know Danny, he's playing with such an incredible array of artists at the moment. Everyone from the Cat Empire to Tina Arena, Angus and Julia Stone, the Bamboos, the list goes on. But what I really wanted to chat with Danny about today was his incredible home recording setup. Now Danny, like a lot of musicians and drummers, has established a home recording facility, but he's taken it to a place that many of us really aspire to, and that's to actually be recording on major releases from home. Now in this chat today, I speak with Danny about exactly how he got his setup going in the first place, where he didn't really know much about recording at all to taking it to the level where he is now, as well as how he balances his touring and live commitments with his recording schedule, both from home and outside of home. Now alongside of this, I also speak a little bit with Danny about how he manages to balance his family life with his musical commitments, which is something I think a lot of us can relate to. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Danny Ferrugia. Before we jump into today's conversation, I want to offer you a free gift, and today that's my seven ways to attract more work as a drummer PDF guide. If you feel like you're working on all the right stuff, you're seeing improvement in your playing, perhaps you're actually quite established in your local music scene, but still you're not working just as much as you would like to, then this guide is perfect for you. Here I offer you seven ways to reapproach your development and your progression as a drummer and offer you a fresh perspective on some things you might be able to change in your development to hopefully bring in a little bit more work. The best thing about this guide is that only one of the tactics involves picking up a pair of drumsticks at all. So if you're feeling a little stuck, frustrated and tired of not being able to be out there working and playing more, then please head to drummersperspective.com slash seven ways and grab that free downloadable PDF guide right now. Danny Ferrugia, what a legend. Thank you so much for spending some uh, some time today to share your wisdom and knowledge on all things music and recording and uh man you're such a you're such a like an inspiration to me and an idol in a sense of how you're balancing like your touring stuff and your recording stuff and having a family as well that's a that's a whole different thing that maybe we can we can talk about a little bit as well but um but yeah we actually saw each other only a couple of weeks ago that's here right. in, in Tokyo which was wild um but yeah, now you're back in Melbourne, and I'm I'm still here in Tokyo. But um, yeah, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's great to chat with you, uh, like in this format because we have spoken a lot over the years in various right. places, yeah, and, uh, about recording and and playing and things like that. But to do it in this format is uh, is super cool. So thank well, you, man, for man, spending thanks, time. Thanks for thanks for having me in that lovely intro. But yeah, we we have spoken about these topics just casually as friends over the years so it's good to sit down and formalize it i guess <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah. um and man yeah for anyone that doesn't know danny ferrugia i would highly suggest you you go and check him out he's without a doubt one of like australia's most in demand and, and versatile players right now um you're touring cat empire and tina arena and angus and julia stone and working with the bamboos um and as well as various gigs in and around melbourne um but when i i first had the idea to set up this channel and this platform uh for drummers to share information and and kind of give uh, a voice to like you don't just have to play gigs as a drummer there's all these other facets and avenues of having a music career that you can go down um and for you what i really love is the fact how you've been able to balance your your touring and your live stuff with this incredible home recording setup that you have now where you've you've built it kind of from the ground up to now where you're playing on some super you know big releases from your home studio um which yeah. is a dream for so many people and um it, it's it's i guess easier and cheaper than ever to set up home recording studios so a lot of people are doing that but you've done it to a level that's that's uh that's really 
you're able to work on anything from from home, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I guess we can just start. Like, how did you first become interested in the whole home recording thing? Yeah, sure. I'll talk you through that. So yeah, after building my studio about ten years ago, it was it was the purpose of it was to be a practice space. It wasn't for recording. I actually just right. wanted. I wanted a practice room. I've always, mm-hmm. you know, I had drums in the house and, you know, you're always like, ah, oh, I don't want to annoy anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, yeah, it was building like a soundproof room in the garage and then I can have drums set up and I can practice. So, yeah, I, I, that was about 10 years ago we built that. And when I started practicing, also started working as a session musician, like part of practice, I mean, practice is learning, right? honing in those skills that we want mm-hmm. as drummers but it, it sort of occurred to me that to to make that translate in sessions i should be honing in my skills as an engineer as well to a certain level you know obviously yeah i didn't want to be a you know a top engineer and known as an engineer but i wanted to have that conversation with engineers where i could come to the table and understand what's going on you know sure, so yeah. if if someone does want a particular drum sound, it's like, oh, yeah, I think if if I tune the drums this way mm. and and maybe we mic it this way, mm-hmm. we're going to get that result. Mm. So it's trying to find that balance of, of just like understanding all the links in the chain to get a recorded drum sound. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I remember starting off with, I bought an, an Apogee Duet two-channel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, and if I just get a couple of condensers mm. and use overheads, I'll I'll start to get an idea. And I can also practice mm-hmm. in a in a door and have a have a click going and mm-hmm. just start mm-hmm. to learn how to edit some things, like just mm-hmm. to build up that knowledge. And I remember saying to um a great engineer that I work with a lot, Adam Rhodes, I remember telling him, like, oh, I've got this two channel thing and I'm just going to buy two, I'm just going to buy two microphones. That's it. You know, and I'm just <laughs> yeah. going to practice. Yeah. And I remember him laughing and just like, he's, <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see, see how that goes. You know, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> right. yeah, sure. Man. And then of course, yeah, like that's opening the can of worms. The gear you know? trap. And then absolutely. Like, oh, the yeah. gear trap. Then, oh, I would love some more channels and some more microphones. So, yeah. but it's really built up for me over, over that 10 year span. Mm-hmm. And then, and then sort of for me trying to take it to that next level of making it a, like a professional service that people mm. would call upon. Mm. So sort of the inspiration for that came from a good friend of mine, Ben Edgar, a great musician who I mm. tour with a lot. Mm. And he set up a recording studio at his house. And I was blown away by watching him sort of just operate when we're on tour he would get you know calls or emails to do guitar sessions and he would sort of say oh yeah i can do that for you in two weeks time Mm. and uh, i was blown away because he was dictating the time of when he could work Mm -hmm. and i'd never seen that before all my (laughs) life it's it's always been can you do a gig on wednesday Can you do a session on Friday the 17th? And mm-hmm. if you say no, mm. you've lost the gig. That's it. Totally. Like people yeah. have a set day. And if you say no, you're out. Mm-hmm. And then potentially you're going to be out of on further work as well. So mm. I thought, geez, that home studio is great because people operate in this remote world where they're, they're not booking five musicians in a studio at once. And they mm-hmm. do have lead lead way with with time so Mm. you can you know i was having kids Mm -hmm. and i thought Mm -hmm. geez it'd be cool if like if they do you know daycare on tuesday i make that my session day and i just tell people yeah yeah "Yeah, next tuesday sure i'll I'll give you the day and record stuff from home so that was pretty inspiring to see that Mm -hmm. um so that's you know it's like oh maybe i should buy some more gear and Mm -hmm. (laughs) some more channels and i mean if you have to right like (laughs) if i have to um but yeah i mean look and it's not cheap setting up a drum recording you know brig Mm -hmm. it's like it's it's Mm -hmm. expensive and and you know i'm always inspired when i see certain people kind of go like oh yeah we got this great drum sound with three microphones it's like Mm. that's amazing but also Mm. i feel limited if i'm sending people a a file Mm. it's like i 
I want to send them some options too. I mean, I might think it sounds totally cool with just mm -hmm. an overhead and a and a microphone under my drum yeah. stool going through a sans amp. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's that's wild. But the sound, they yeah. might not sort of want that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, here's a you know a left and right overhead. Here's a mm -hmm. couple on the bass drum. Here's yeah. a room mic. You can mix it and and color it how you want. Mm. Um, but it's all there, and you know, and the performance you know, the number one thing, hopefully like the performance mm. is, is great. So mm. building it up like that was, you know, took a, a bit longer than anticipated, yeah. but yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm there. I mean, I'm always on the hunt for, oh, do I need this other mic or yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you kind of got to stop somewhere too though. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you're so right with the, with the way that you set up a drum room and especially if you're going to commit to it being a professional service, yeah. Um, you, you kind of got to go all in with it, you know, like, it's not like you can, you know, bass or, or keys or whatever. You can buy decent DI and laptop and pretty much good to yeah. go. Like drums, you know, you were just saying before we, we started recording, like how intentional, um, the design and construction of that space that you're in now was, um, yes. and that's a, that's such a, a huge thing. Um, but you know, again, amazing that you're able to do it in your home environment you know and uh and yeah. it, it seems like a really versatile space as well sonically um can you talk a little bit about that uh again how how it was designed and, and some of the decisions you made in that sense yeah sure so that i mean the design was it was always about getting the drums you know feeling good in the room and me feeling good in the room so mm -hmm. it was, I, I the the pitched roof of the garage is great and with the with the builder who is a who's a musician too um right. you know i said to him like i just want to set my drums underneath the the tallest part in mm -hmm. the room you know mm -hmm. i want air above the drums mm -hmm. and i mean i didn't know really much about acoustic designing you know that's a whole mm -hmm. other thing mm -hmm. and i've seen people go down that path too and have you know some serious people design things and it doesn't doesn't sound that good or it doesn't feel that good you know yeah, i don't sure. want to be in the space so mm -hmm. I, I was fortunate just to say look i want my drums set up here and i want mm -hmm. a window where i can have natural light coming in mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i don't really need to turn lights on during yeah. the day um because that's important for me i want to actually come out here i want to feel like i want to be in the room you know mm -hmm. like it's mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah, a good space for, sure. for me so um, so we built it like that, you know, and then we did a few things like towards one end of the room where it's so low, the ceiling goes quite down. I thought that'll be storage for drums. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, even the, the way I planned, which way the door would open mm -hmm. was intentional just so like sure. I can walk gear in and out and not yeah, have to yeah. sort of maneuver around the door. Um, but yeah, so that, that was kind of the design of the room. It was just maximizing the space I had. Mm -hmm. And then I built a whole heap of, um, baffles like mm. sound diffusers um mm -hmm. just you know some friends just talking mm -hmm. to people just <laughs> yeah like yeah, hey yeah. what did you do in this studio how did you do that and you know yeah. everyone's great at sharing information yeah. and you know i oh, get this material try that so yeah. i built a lot of the baffles and then uh maybe about four or five years ago i got um a guy in melbourne chris for who builds these diffusers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i got him to to fix me up six of these great mm. diffusers he's mm -hmm. done all the math and they're really good and i noticed the difference of the drum sound it's just like wow. it's especially between frequencies like highs and lows it's mm -hmm. cleaner it's more articulate mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden the cymbal sounds more kind of not isolated but you can hear it mm -hmm. a bit more defined than yeah. before we had all the diffusion so i've sure. got that and he did some uh, bass traps for me as well in the corners. So, right. you know, but that's all, that's all an expense mm. too, you mm -hmm. know, and I didn't, I didn't just lay it all out at once. It's always mm. been, you know, stages. There's yeah. probably like, you know, 30 stages of this yeah, studio yeah. build. <laughs> I, I guess that's the thing too, that I, I was curious about which when, when musicians and drummers set up home recording facilities, some people seem to be like all in from the beginning. Like it, they're like, they commit like, okay, I'm going to do the home recording thing and they buy all the yeah. gear and do all the redesign, remodel of their room. 
and it's like everything all at once versus um, your approach. And and I think kind of my approach was pretty similar, which was a bit more um, progressive and it, yes. it, you know, the equipment um, kind of followed the same path as uh, the knowledge, <laughs> I guess, in that sense, like yeah. you, you learn one thing and then you think, okay, you kind of get to the limitations of that. And then you add another element and then you kind of just builds and builds from there to the, to the space that you're in now. 100% because some people that if you, if you go all in too, if like me, I didn't have the knowledge. So mm. if I was jumping all in, mm. you know, I'll probably just would have read forums and, mm. you know, be kind of like, you're sort of buying gear that other people are trying to justify why they spent so much money on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 100%, so yeah. It's good to do it naturally and then sort of go, Oh yeah. I mean, for example, I didn't have a pair of monitors mm. until about six months ago. Like I'd yeah. always just, I, I wasn't really mixing anything either. Mm. So it was mm. just about headphones, tracking, trying to get good sounds, hearing mm. things through the microphone and, mm. and that was it. Um, and then, you know, finally I was like, Oh, I, it would be nice to have some monitors just to mm. hear things yeah. back from a distance. And, and, you know, so when I wanted to, to make that purchase, it's like, cool. I know a bunch of engineers. Mm -hmm. I just start talking to them and getting mm. their feedback and then picking something that way, you know, but it's, sure. it's always been a bit of like that natural progression of, I feel like I could use this now mm -hmm. and I would get value out of it. So I will make that step. That's the best, man. That's really the best. Yeah. Um, yes. yeah. And I've been so fortunate to have good people around me too, mm. that I can that I ask for advice. You know, they're yeah. always happy to, to share their thoughts. Well, speaking about that, um, how much of your work, like your recording work now is done from home and how much are you being called to, you know, commercial facilities and does your, does, does your approach to recording differ in those environments? Obviously if you're at home, you're a lot more self-driven and you have to kind of make decisions, you know, independently. Uh, yep. But yeah, playing wise, does it differ? Uh, but yeah, I'm just curious, like what, what's the balance at the moment? Yeah, that that's, they're good points you raise. Um, to start off with, the balance is probably 50-50. Yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and there's not there's not a lot going on right now. I mm -hmm. feel like in in Melbourne, just recording wise, I mean, mm -hmm. one of the um, one of our great studios, Sing Sing, mm -hmm. which had two buildings, one closed, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you know five or so years ago, mm -hmm. and the other one's about to to close down as well you know like mm. so these bigger spaces are going um mm. but yeah i mean i i'd say 50 50 like yeah out there mm. and then people i think more people are wanting to work remotely as well sure yeah you know, artists yeah. want to demo things up at home because they can and they mm. want to spend their their time trying different things and mm -hmm. you know so i think it suits people to send files around yeah um so yeah that i'd say 50 50 and and my approach i mean my approach musically doesn't really change at all mm. i mean mm. you you're correct in saying it's you don't have like you're sort of by yourself so you mm. are sort of motivating and pushing things on your own mm. pushing ideas mm -hmm. trying to find things there's no feedback there's no instantaneous mm. feedback mm. i miss that you know, mm. I love being in the room with someone and, and trying something. Mm -hmm. like, oh, let me try this. I'll get I'll, I'll mm -hmm. get a shaker and do this. And you can see mm -hmm. the look on their face like they're either into it or not. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, before yeah. you do like a whole take and try to kind of go like, oh, maybe maybe if I just mix it a bit different or mm. try to, to place it somewhere a bit different in the image, it could mm -hmm. work. And, mm -hmm. you know, you sort of go down these rabbit holes of that. Mm when you're by yourself whereas mm -hmm. if i'm in the room with someone i might just be able to pick up on it straight away like ah oh, they're not into it let's yeah, yeah. try something else mm -hmm. um so yeah I, you know i am trying to when i do things for people at home really try to it, get it sounding exciting and mm. and find the parts that mm. make the music exciting if i'm mm. excited to listen to it hopefully they're going to get it back and also yeah. be excited um so yeah i mean I do also like going into a room where I don't have to look at the computer Yeah, and sure. I can just be playing drums, you know, yeah. like I remember yeah. after, after a lot of the COVID 
lockdowns in Melbourne and I was mm. doing a lot more recording from home. Mm. The first session I went to, you know, in a studio with people, it was, mm. that was the thing I remember just like, oh, I just set up my drums. It's like, cool. Yeah. I, I can just play drums. I don't have to worry about checking mm. phase, what mm. mics are where it's, mm. it was just, it was really enjoyable. So, For sure. you know, that, that, yeah, I mean, they're, it's all great, really. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's certainly pros and cons to both. Like we, we were just saying before about how, you know, you were working in a, a session yesterday and now you're <laughs> doing the cleanup phase of of the uh, the experimentation of trying drums and mics and things like that, um, which is great because you have time, not limitless time in a sense that you, you are still want to, you know, get through things on your own watch, yeah. but you don't have people, you know, in the control room kind of just sitting there waiting for you to find the right sound. Um, That's that, right. Um, yeah. You can like experiment a little bit more. Um, but I, I'm curious in, in a sense of like when you do finally like send files to, you know, an artist, Yeah, are you someone who sends multiple takes and uh, you mentioned about sending different microphone configurations, even if, the intention is not to use them all, but yeah. Or do you, are you someone who just is, is, you know, this is the take I think you should use kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting. That changes all mm. the time, depending on who I'm working for. So yesterday's session was for a, a songwriter, um, a singer songwriter, and she plays violin as well. And I've, mm. I worked on an album with her about a year ago, recorded mm. all the drums from home. So she had a few more songs to do and, I just send her one take great <laughs> because I know she kind of trusts me mm. and that's our relationship. You know, she's Amazing. sort of like, here's a, here's a guide, but mm. please do your thing. And so mm. I, you know, and often I'll like really get involved in it then and right. give more than probably what needs to be there as well. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, just yeah. in case you want this, like yeah, yeah. here's some more options. I think it sounds really cool and I'll spend a bit more time in the production side of things on my end, just like mixing it, finding cool mm. textures and colors for it. Mm -hmm. Though when I send the files, it's always like, here's a stereo bounce, mm. but it's not a, a mix as such. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I also send all the, the stems, just yeah, yeah. isolated stems that are raw mm. and, and then they can mix it when they've got everything up in front of them. But mm. I do get pretty kind of excited and invested mm. in that process mm. but then sometimes too like i've some people will are a bit more clear on what they want so they'll mm. they'll say yeah we want three takes one really straightforward mm -hmm. one with a bit more character and then the third one just you know do your thing yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> great so which is you know it's it's cool and i like that process too it 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 actually keeps it a bit more simplified for me and i can be a bit more conscious of the time mm. it's going to take as well i mean yeah. you know i might sort of then go cool i should be able to do three you know mm. set up and do a few takes within an hour or two like that's mm -hmm. cool whereas mm -hmm. the other open ended just mm. do your thing mm. I could end up spending a day on something yeah. <laughs> if I'm really into it, you yeah, know, yeah. like, yeah. so, um, it, it always sort of changes yeah. and it's, I mean, and I, I kind of kick myself for this too. Like I, I should have that conversation every time mm. in the beginning and I never do, mm. you know, like, mm, 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 mm. and then in retrospect, you're like, oh, I should have asked him exactly what they wanted. And, uh -huh. yeah. you know, we could have, yeah, yeah, you know, spoken about what the fee might be involved in mm -hmm. certain processes as mm -hmm. well. Um, mm -hmm. cause it is tricky, you know, like in, in a studio, if I go to a studio and we're on a schedule, mm. you know, I, people are a bit more understanding of like, yeah, okay, let's call it there. We've got what we need. Let's move mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're in your home studio by yourself, mm -hmm. it's like, I could just keep going. Because sure. I love it yeah. too. It's yeah, like, yeah. I just love it. I just sort of think, yeah. oh, maybe actually, you know what? I'm going to do another take because I, yeah. I think I can make it even sound even better. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, just before you know it, you sort of, there goes the day and for sure, I've yeah. had a great time. I've got a big yeah. smile on my face. Yeah. But yeah. for that extra kind of like, you know, marginal difference that mm. someone else might not even really care about or yeah, pick up yeah. on and yeah and they would have been happy to move on a long time ago you know yeah yeah for <laughs> sure man i i had that exact same kind of um 
experience recording at home like earlier on when I when I first started getting into it where it was it was more like performance based stuff though where I'd like do a take and I'd listen back like oh it's not quite right here or there or there I'll do another one and then that kind of gets you know corrected and then something else creeps up of like that wasn't as good as the other take and so you just sit there you know take after take after take Versus like if you were yeah working with a producer or someone, you know, with external ears <laughs> to say like, you yes, know, that one's fine. Like, it's good. We've got everything we need. Then you can just, you know, walk away and say, okay, cool. But, you know, when it's just yeah. yourself, the whole mental thing kicks in of uh, of just making a cutoff point of like, nah, this is the one, you know. That's right. And and uh, and that's good to have a producer, those, those external ears there to sort of mm. say, yeah, we've got it because mm. they can also maybe tell that, you know, we do have it and we don't want people getting tired and fatigued mm-hmm. of just going over the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it's, uh, that's the trap of being by yourself, you know, like you just yeah. go down these rabbit holes, but it's would good you, fun. I, yeah, for sure. <laughs> would, would, would you say like, like what, what would be the most challenging part of the home recording process for you? Would it be that kind of perform, uh, not performance, but like knowing when to call it kind of thing, or is, is it the, the dialogue you have, uh, to try and get to a point of understanding what the artist or, or or client might want. Yeah, I think I think it's more the latter of, of understanding what they want. Mm. You know, it's because there's just there's no feedback. There's mm. no instantaneous feedback like we we're talking about before. You know, mm. you just mm. pick up on body body cues and mm. language in a room mm. that that you can sort of you know things get steered certain ways mm. as a group. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing too. Like I, I've, I've got a session next or not next week, the week after, like, you know, and we're a band in a room again. And mm. I was talking to the producer yesterday saying, oh, I look, I'm looking forward to being in the room with everyone. Mm. Cause he said he, oh, actually, yeah. So yesterday, right. I'm talking to the producer and he said, oh, geez, I've realized, you know, like you do get really good drum sounds at your house <laughs> and yeah. the guitarist, once again, my friend Ben Egger, he's like, mm. Ben gets great tones at his place. Like we could have done this. And I said, oh yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm sure there'll be feedback from like the, the, the piano player might mm-hmm. have a suggestion for me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, just like, Hey, what if we went to hats here or something, you know, like yeah, yeah, that stuff's really cool. So this magic happens mm. a, as from a group mentality, mm. um, yeah, sorry, I, I'm lost. What was the question again? But <laughs> no, man. It's, yeah, it's, that's it's, you yeah. know, like, so yeah, that that's amazing. And when you're by yourself, you mm. sort of so yeah, this is the challenge. It's like mm-hmm. I'm trying to think about what they want, mm-hmm. and even if they haven't said it, it's like mm. what what sort of production values or you know, I'm I, in a sense, you kind of feel like you're producing. Yeah. certain things unless it's that real clear cut like i want three takes mm. here's the demo mm-hmm. do exactly that and then embellish mm. on it like that's that's a no-brainer but if it's mm. that open-ended just like check this out do your thing yeah yeah you start to kind of yeah trying to imagine like well what would they like what are they listening to right now what drummers mm. do they like <laughs> yeah man you know? that's a, yeah that's a whole different thing and yeah depending on who they are and the terminology they use you know you have to maybe sometimes try and decipher what you know a reference to a particular sound or particular artist might be because yes. they might say oh can you make it sound more like this person and they're referring to like the sonic aspect of that person versus like how they technically maybe play a part you know Oh, hundred percent. I mean, mm. that that that'll happen in any any studio. Like, how many times mm. have you had that sort of like, oh, here's the reference, mm. and it's this up tempo thing mm. with this like super dry drum sound or something, and then like, oh, but here's the guy, here's the track, and it's yeah. it's like half the tempo, and it's yeah. just a total <laughs> different thing. It's like, well, yeah, yeah. that's a yeah. an obscure reference, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, wow. But it's kind of cool then too. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, well, maybe there's something in that, and I'll mm. try to explore that for them mm-hmm. you know like let's see but then there's the instant feedback going on like you can try yeah. something and yeah. figure it out but that's 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 a difficult one especially if it's like over email with with yeah. lag of like you know all right hey check out this guide mm-hmm. i think this is cool let me know before i actually record it and then a yeah, day later yeah. you get the email and then yeah. your drums all sound different anyway you know so yeah um 
for sure. But yeah, and and look, I know some people have um I've had like a couple of times I've had an artist actually come to my studio as well and mm. just sit in the room with me while I record. Great. Like I'm into that too. Um and also I haven't done it yet, but you know, some people have talked about like doing this, like having mm. a Zoom mm -hmm. thing and and feeding your your um you, the all the door information audio, like yeah yeah all the audio i think audio movers all these kind of mm, things it's like mm -hmm. you can have like no latency and people mm -hmm. can listen to it and mm, mm. you know so then it could be it could be more instant you know mm, like mm. i guess that sort of um that feedback but you know that's yeah. also for me that's just more kind of technical like yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> stuff Another. i don't want it yeah, I don't yeah, want to think no. about it. Like, I mm. just, I just, I do enjoy just coming out and playing drums. <laughs> mm -hmm. For sure, man. For sure. What was the um, process of you going from, you know, obviously building your studio from from the ground up, practice space, experimenting, getting more and more comfortable to to working on the major releases that you do now? Like, has that come mostly from you being in those bands that you're you know you're recording for or is it like a word of mouth thing when people say like oh did you hear danny's you know got a home studio set up you should get him to record uh yeah how, how did that work and, and did you kind of consciously put yourself out to there to anyone in particular to you know promote your services i guess yeah sure yep that's that's a multitude of things coming together at once mm -hmm. so definitely mm -hmm. you're right like an element of being in bands helped you know, I think one of the, one of the sort of early recordings I did, I did a, a one for Angus and Julia, mm. uh, on their last records, snow, or it was two records ago. And we recorded most of it up at a farm. Wow. At Angus's farm in Byron. And then, you know, like months later, they were sort of piecing together things of jam sessions. And, you know, there was one track that came up that, that they had some uh it's interesting matt johnson's on it actually the drummer the great matt johnson wow, okay. they had some things that they had previously recorded with matt and then they wanted some additional drums as well so there's a great track that's got matt and i on oh, drums wow. like, yeah you know, i was like so Amazing. honored to be yeah. you know, like <laughs> on the same liner notes as him yeah um, but you know and that was like recorded here and at that stage i had a little um uh eight channel interface a scarlet the scarlet mm. i forget what model it is like usb interface it had mm -hmm. eight pre's in it i didn't even i had no external preamps wow you know and just like some kick snare and hats and mm -hmm. yeah that was kind of it and i mean that wouldn't have come if i hadn't been playing with the band mm. for sure you know mm -hmm. so there's an element of that you know, mm. um and then you know, there's a bit of word of mouth um, mm -hmm. that's been going on. Mm. Like, uh, I've I've got this sort of love hate with Instagram mm -hmm. I, and social media. I just, mm -hmm. you know, I, I yeah, it's all pretty consuming. And yeah, yeah. However, it's one of those things. Like, I'll, I'll sort of just vanish from it for mm. extended periods of time, mm. and then just like the last two days, you know, I was recording in here. It's like, oh, I should post some little things because yeah. people do see it and they mm. they kind of go oh that's right hey you're recording yeah. this and and you do some more like mm. so it's that's kind of cool as well um mm. and also that that platform too just sometimes you know people will write me questions like oh mm -hmm. you, you're using luna i see mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. what do you think of that and mm -hmm. so it's kind of cool just to communicate mm -hmm. and talk with people mm. um but then you know like yeah other like the sessions i did was yesterday was through a friend mm. who sort of referred me um mm -hmm. because he knew i had a recording set up and then mm. i've got one for next week that i'll do from home and and that's from playing at a at a gig mm. you know and someone wow. seeing me at a, at a show and just being like hey can you record something so it's it's a combination of all those things i don't really kind of go to my way to advertise it except for on my website i you know i I will put up recordings that I've done in my studio, which mm. is nice, not necessarily to um, kind of drum up business in a sense, but mm. if someone does want to question anything about mm. like, you know, oh, what, do, what have you recorded in your studio before I book you? 
I can just say, hey, there's a there's a bunch of stuff up there and you can go and have a listen, mm. you know, which is nice too because I know, you know, they've been mixed and mastered by great people. So it's yeah. going to sound good and, and yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it's good to sort of have that representation. Sure. And I guess it's good for you too if someone says like, hey, like I love that demo track that's on your website. Can you get a similar sound for my thing? You know yeah. exactly how you got that sound you know you can say like yep i can bring up this kit i can get this these mics you know yeah and it's it's you can pretty confidently do that but i, I love what you're saying about your website because i was just checking it out this morning and the simplicity of your like recording page is beautiful <laughs> you know it's just like <laughs> drums and percussion recorded from home contact me for details or something like that it's like oh man i love that because you know some people some people's websites where they're advertising themselves as, as recording yeah. from home it's the, the flash and the, you know, the video and the logos. And, and all the, the, blah, blah, the blah. list of gear that they've yeah. got and all those kind of things. Look, and that's all great, you know. Um, totally, totally. And it probably, and it probably like sort of weeds out a lot of, you know, yes, waste, that's it. like wasted time as well um, yeah. for certain people who are very in demand too. Like, mm. but it, for me, it's, it's a bit more casual than that. So mm. if someone contacts me, you know, yeah, contact me mm. if you want more mm. info. And mm -hmm. often, you know, sometimes two people will, will write and I'll just be like, oh, let's just talk on the phone. Like, yeah, here's my sure. number, call me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just talk. And because mm -hmm. even if it doesn't lead to a recording job, but, you know, it's just kind of cool to connect yeah. with people and chat about things. I, I'm sort of into that aspect of it as well. For sure, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I guess um, going from there, as we were saying in the, beginning like i i really wanted to establish this platform of of drummer's perspective to kind of yeah give um like shed light on the fact that as drummers we don't just have to go down that career path of of just playing gigs and you know and that's kind of all there is you know with music um you know yeah. like like i was saying yourself you've been able to establish this incredible like home recording business as as a side thing to the amazing touring and li and live stuff you're doing so I guess like from from your point of view, how important do you think it is in today's music industry and music scene to have these other skill sets in place aside from, you know, just being great at drums and being great at what you what you do and what you play? But do you think it's important that people yeah, yeah, have another avenue aside from just the playing thing, whether it be recording or composing or, you know, um, playing another instrument you know i'd love to hear your thoughts yeah. on that yeah um you know like I, i've always kind of just done things that i want to do like mm -hmm. it's which is i've got that luxury you know like mm. yeah I, I get to to play i get to tour with good bands so mm. for me it's like i i feel like i also want to record music from home and i want to mm. create music from home mm. um and it has worked like it's mm you know, everything I've done is very natural and there's, there's never been a real sort of plan to mm -hmm. kind of have, you know, a percentage of income revenue from mm -hmm. this area. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not that. So mm -hmm. it's just sort of balancing it over time and finding what keeps me happy and, mm -hmm. and feeling good. Um, you know, like the recording, the touring, I do a bit of teaching as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Not a, not a great deal. Um, because also that's, like if I go away for a tour, mm. you know, I, I was just, well, we caught up in Japan, mm. you know, but I was on a holiday for a few weeks and mm. that was cool because I'm a casual employee at Melbourne University and it's like, mm. you know, what, I'm casual. I can go away for a few weeks and mm. make up the lessons when I get back. But mm. if I was going to go away for longer, mm. I might say to those students, maybe don't get me to teach you this semester because I'm mm. going to be away for a lot, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so... I sure. do like the the sort of flexibility of being able to go where I I feel like you know I want to mm -hmm. go, um, mm -hmm. but certainly I like any kind of conversations I have with other drummers as, and especially students. I, I'm always trying to tell them like mm -hmm. get a get a two channel interface and mm -hmm. just buy a couple of SM fifty sevens and start mm -hmm. recording because. Mm -hmm it's going to benefit your playing. You're going to hear back things. You're going to listen objectively. You're going to improve so much faster. Mm. And 
and you also it's a great way of setting goals for your playing mm. as well just mm. you know, it's amazing if i've myself like I, I i recently over last christmas like i wanted to play the solo by steve gadd awesome. you know i hadn't i hadn't played it since i was 16 so yeah you know i spent a few days and it's like great when you kind of go all right i'm gonna record this and video it mm-hmm. and i've got a nate like i've got to do it in one take yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. good and so yeah. you could just kind of get lost in in actually yeah achieving mm. that goal and sort of then ha- having it complete mm-hmm. if Sometimes if there's not that end mm-hmm. goalpost, you mm-hmm. know, you just kind of like, all right, I'll try it again. No, nah, it's not yeah. happening today. Yeah. I'm done. So yeah. it's it's nice. Um, so I yeah, I'm t- always encouraging people to try to just start recording things because also that dialogue that they'll have with other musicians, engineers. Mm. You know, I remember like some other drummers w- might say like, oh, you should never let an engineer kind of like tell you how to tune your drums or how to set them up you know which i kind of understand but Mm. then it's like well man you should try recording that bass drum yeah you know that's got it's like really long in notes you know and it's boing it's like it's and try a fast up tempo Mm. tune Mm -mm. it doesn't translate through the Mm -hmm. microphone so you just learn so much like okay maybe actually i should take the front head off and put a put a towel in there like it's gonna (laughs) sound better for everyone and it's also gonna make the you the drummer sound better Mm. you know like i love talking to engineers even in a live setting just like hey how's that those tones working for you and Mm -hmm. they might go oh i'm actually finding that you know it could be shorter on the toms or something it's like cool let's dampen them a bit yeah and then yeah i know it's gonna sound better out the front that said though that's like a friendly conversation i've had other people sort of you know that i i don't know personally and they're just like yeah. can someone fix that floor tom and it's like yeah. what do you mean fix it there's nothing <laughs> wrong with it like yeah sure sure, sure. <laughs> it's just it's just my vibe so you yeah. know um but yeah so like diversifying that way and um and definitely i've got to say another big one is like some percussion as well mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. like i've got a dozen tambourines now mm-hmm. and shakers and all mm-hmm. these things and and part of me wishes like while i was studying um especially at the the college of the arts you know like mm. I, I should have got some lessons with alex patu and mm. just sort of you know a, a great percussionist and like hey mm. can you show me some more conga things and yeah, yeah. you know which which is kind of cool because whenever i hang out with percussionists mm. i i'm always kind of asking him little mm. you know mm. little tips that i can mm-hmm. uh, steal and try to practice but yeah. you know that's that's super useful shredding yeah. some sort of paradiddle licks mm. i don't use as much <laughs> yeah, in this yeah. situation as 100%. i use like playing good 16th notes on the tambourine you know mm-hmm. like that's mm-hmm. but i'm t- I, it's not to say i'm not into like trying to get into some paradiddle things because yeah. i love that stuff too yeah. you know but it's it's just an appreciation for for all of it mm-hmm for sure, man. Yeah. For sure, I I guess that's it. Like it's it's diversifying within what you do as a recording musician from home as well. Like I think some guys, you know, like they have this facility to record from home, and then unfortunately pigeonhole themselves into just doing like one thing and getting one sound. You know, which yeah, totally. It's kind of it's it's a bit of a shame in some ways because once you've got the space set up and you've got the equipment it's really you're really just limited by your like how far you want to take it and your knowledge you know you can always learn more and always grow more but yeah being able to offer the service of like drums and percussion is is a great asset i'd imagine yeah i I Mm. think so and you know a a great thing for me like there's been a couple of really good lessons like working with um steven tram a great engineer Mm. on, on on a bunch of records you know he would sometimes like when i'd ask him you know like oh what are you gonna so how are you going to record these drums? Like, what's mm. your kind of go-to setup? Mm-hmm. And he's like, I don't have one. Like, it just <laughs> changes every song. Wow. Great. You know, it's it's yeah. always that sort of approach. Like, let's yeah. search for something for the song. So I, I I try to go down that path a bit, you know. Like, I've mm. got a few kind of standard things, mm. but it, it's it's trying to experiment a little and, and find new things. Like, always mm. try to discover new sounds and... And recording, like I've done two solo albums now mm. and I still continue to just make little short compositions and that's like total out, 
you know, I get my vibraphone and and use the bow on the vibraphone and run it through a, you know, a Moog emulator and like Amazing. search for weird sounds, you know. Mm. But there's that level, like that art form, has really paid off because sometimes mm. when I'm doing more straight ahead singer songwriter songs, I might get like a a, a shaker, mm. uh, like a waterfall shaker, and I know if I put it through like the Lexicon Reverb plugin, it. Yeah becomes this super mysterious washy out sound yeah and i can just insert it and i know because i've given myself that time to artistically go down those journeys and and search for sounds you know and so it does then yeah you know like so and some of that music is it's kind of out and weird Mm. but it's Mm. it's it's like if i can draw little points of it later on Mm -hmm. it'll it'll totally slot in here and there on 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 a sure. you know a commercial release for example yeah for sure yeah that's amazing i mean that's kind of one of the the biggest advantages of having that home recording space as we were saying before like giving yourself that time to experiment and and play and try things and then you know the result that you get from that one session of experimenting might not be something that ever sees the light of day but then later on yeah we, you, when you are playing on a release for someone you can reference that thing and, and insert it in as you say and that's that's like the the best thing you can get out of it in some ways, you know? Yeah, 100%. Mm. And and even if it's not specifically in this room as well, mm. it could be when mm. I go to another recording session, mm. you know, and I can mm. say, oh, hey, this does sound cool. Like, can you just like verb this right out? And, yeah. it, you know, so, yeah, I've given myself that that time. Yeah. And and look, and that that's also then that becomes a whole nother, um, you know, approach to to music making like creating which we don't get a lot Mm. as drummers you know Mm. like we don't you know well at least my upbringing like i never really composed anything i just Mm -hmm. always played on other people's Mm -hmm. compositions Mm. which in a way is composing because Mm. you know a lot of the time you're in the studio and you're the first person to be recorded like it's Mm. like everyone's really wanting that drum take because we Mm. can overdub the bass later or whatever it is but so the pressure's on and maybe there's no information about the song and so you are composing the drums to a song and and trying to think about what someone wants so um having an opportunity to actually compose Mm. with you know that's just me in Mm -hmm. by myself and and search for sound and kind of go well this actually this is cool this is mm-hmm. a vibe and it's working mm-hmm. and i i'm excited or sometimes you know making my last record i had plenty of times of like coming up with things spending a day trying to you know come up with some cool drum groove and sound mm-hmm. and then just being like ah that's not working for me at all nah, scrap yeah. that idea yeah. you know it's Man. it's all part of the process and it's good to go through that because then i mm-hmm. i I can relate to singers and songwriters when I'm working mm-hmm. with them as a session mm-hmm. musician. Like mm-hmm. I get it. Sometimes mm-hmm. you got to, sometimes you got to try stuff and you don't know exactly what it is you want and you've got to try it and maybe mm-hmm. kind of go, yeah, that's, that's feeling good or not. And I think I used to, I, you know, maybe at one point I was starting to get a little, um, you know, not annoyed with that, but just you'd sort of, if someone was unsure and, and, you know, it's like, oh, you're kind of wasting time here. You know, I'm mm-hmm. trying this and I'm trying that. Mm-hmm. Tell me what it is you want. But mm. it's hard sometimes. You don't know what you want. So yeah, for sure. actually yeah. having that experience, you know, it's good. You know how it is. It's like with kids, you know, like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you're working all the time, then you come home. It's mm-hmm. it's 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 like, well, hang on, this is another world. And, yeah. and once you do it for a while, then when you're with the kids for extended periods of time, you're like, Oh, now I get it. Now that's mm-hmm. why you're so tired because it's exhausting <laughs> work as well. Like totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, so I, it's I think, it's it's great having that man. Yeah, I, I I that leads me really well into the kind of how I want to wrap this up in a sense is like you you balancing like having a young family and your super busy touring schedule and you know recording from home like that's a a huge asset that you're able to, as we said before, just walk out to your, your backyard and, and record drums and, and make money and for people and make music. Yeah. Um, but do you have like a conscious approach to balancing the, you know, family and music in general? I know that's a, that's a really broad question and, you know, each yeah. situation might be different, but just, um, 
it, it's a it's a thing that you know a lot of drummers and musicians you know are trying to find that balance constantly so yeah what what's, what's yeah. your take on that well you know like yeah i mean we're trying to find that balance just within ourselves as well but i uh, you know i always use this great analogy that i got from lachlan davidson a great mm. um sax player in melbourne we were doing a show together and 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 i picked him up we're driving into the city together and we're talking about tempos of songs mm. and he he said to me he says oh, you never really know that the sweet tempo until you go too fast and too slow and he said it's like sailing like with the mm-hmm. with the tension of the sail like mm-hmm. you never know that optimum tension until you go too tight and then yeah. loosen it and then tie it again and then loosen mm-hmm. it's like ah oh, that's the sweet spot so the balance for me like you know i've got a big tour coming up at the end of the year and i know it's going to be a long one and it's going to mm-hmm. tip it over the edge a little of like uh that's too much touring right my sweet spot is a bit more back at home like, yep. i know that's going to happen but also okay. that's just the way it is sometimes too mm. so mm. you know it was great we just did a family holiday mm. like i didn't i didn't touch drumsticks for a month mm. um which was also great you know like just mm-hmm. uh, i'm 39 now so just to have part of my life where it's like, yeah, you know, I, I didn't pick up a pair of sticks for a month was, Mm -hmm. was really good for me. I've never Mm. done that before. Mm. And then I went straight into a cat empire show. I was like, "Uh Oh, here we go. Um, but yeah, it was all fine. You know, it's all Mm. fine. It's, it's Mm -hmm. cool. So yeah, you know, look, we try to balance those things out. My, my wife is amazing and she is a creative and a freelancer. Mm. So it can get pretty kind of hectic of who's doing what with kids um i love the days you know where i can walk my kids to school and come home and and make music in the studio and put on a lasagna in the slow cooker at lunchtime and then go pick them up like you know it's totally cool when that it is a dream Mm. it's it sure is man but then you know like i'll be out with the cat empire in america this year and you know i'm really excited for that as well like Mm. i love traveling Mm-hmm. You know, did a couple of gigs this week at some jazz clubs. Also yeah. great, you know, like, yeah. and so, yeah, sometimes the balance can get, you know, a bit heavy mm. on different, in different areas and it, and it, you know, can get tricky and mm-hmm. difficult, but, you know, you, you, sometimes you don't really know until sort of a bit later down the track sure, as well. Sure. Yeah. 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 And I think I, it's, it's another thing, actually, I was going to say last night, uh, my wife and I were driving into the city, so she had an event and I had a gig. Mm. Grandparents were here watching the kids and and um and I got an email just before I left about just getting my visas sorted for the US. Mm. You know, and it's a long tour and she's like, Oh, I don't want to think about that yet. And I said, I, I said to her, I I'm not gonna think about it at all. Like I'm yeah. just not gonna think about it because yeah. it's a long time that I'm gonna be away for and mm. it's like, uh, you know, I don't wanna think about it too much as well. Like I'll just just do it and then mm-hmm. I'll come home and yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it is tricky to balance it all out, mm-hmm. you know, like communicating all this stuff, especially with, with, um with, with your partner is, mm-hmm. is kind of the key. Mm-hmm. And, and it's also been good because as difficult as it is that she's a creative and a freelancer, because things can get hectic at times, but she also gets it like, sure. you know, Mm-hmm. Before she was doing that job, there would be times like we might go on a family holiday and like a couple of times we went to, I remember once we were in Bali and I flew back to Darwin for a gig and wow. then another holiday we were in Thailand and I flew to Borneo for a gig, like oh in gosh. the middle of the holidays, right? And and I think she was a bit like, oh, at the time, just like, you know, can't we just have a family holiday? You still have to pack your symbols now. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but then when she's been working as a, a creative, she kind of gets it too because mm. certain jobs come up and it's like, geez, if I don't take that, mm. I, I might miss out on future work with that artist. And mm-hmm. so it's it's just that common understanding. It's really great to sort of live in other people's shoes a bit as well and, mm. And, mm. you know, get to know actually they're trying their best, you know, mm. they're trying to, to balance and juggle and, mm-hmm. and it is difficult. So I, I would need to just, you know, let them keep trying their best. It's all, it's all good. It's all going to be fine. Man, that's amazing. Like it's such great insight from someone who's 
living that life. Like you're operating at the top of your game, you know, in a professional sense. And also, yeah, trying to, trying to balance the family thing as you go. Like it's, it's yeah. Like, like I said before, man, you're such an inspiration to me, like in everything that you do and how you balance all that stuff. So thank you for, for sharing that. And thanks for taking the time today to, oh, to man, talk about my, all this stuff, man. It's amazing. My absolute pleasure, Ben. And, and right back at you, man, like you're a, a heavy inspiration, <laughs> like oh, such right. a great musician and, and father. And like, you know, I remember like walking in Adelaide when, like with the stroller, just like yeah, yeah. hanging out, you know, it's just yeah. like dad's yeah. doing their thing and, and totally. talking, but it's, mm. It's good to talk about it too, you know, like mm. that's that's why we need this community as well, just mm-hmm. to share mm. our thoughts and feelings about things. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and know that we're kind of not alone and, and we're all trying to figure this out too, you know, and have a Absolutely. good time while doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the most important thing. So where, where can people find you if they want to check out like what you're doing or, you know, you said you're on Instagram or your website, that kind of thing? Yeah, sure. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm at Instagram, uh, the the handle is, is that what you say? Yeah, is, so. is Daniel dot and um, you know, <laughs> you might catch me on a week where I'm posting things. You might catch me <laughs> on a week where <laughs> there's radio silence. Um, but yeah, so that and then my website danielferugia.net, and you know, there's um, you know, a contact page and some recordings there. I have a couple of albums out. Um, some vinyl that you can get through the website as well. But otherwise, it's on all the streaming platforms. Um, yeah. So, and and anyone that's listening to, if any questions, just hit me up because I'm always up for a chat. Amazing, man. This has been so great. Thank you so much, man, for taking the time and uh, and chatting. And uh, I hope we can do it again soon. I would love that. Thanks, Ben. Oh cool, um, man. I'll speak to you soon, my man. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. Okay. Bye. Yeah, man. Bye. Ciao.